So if you download the, the, the documents that we have in there, the ones I have printed, and I'm also going to put them on the screen, I have a payroll liability report that is called total cash required. I have a payroll liability report that contains uh, taxes. I have a payroll summary report that contains all the employees' pay, hours, and uh, their net checks, which are not relevant in this case. But at least you get the hours, which that's going to be very relevant. And then on the fourth page, I have a deductions uh, summary. I'm going to pull it up on the screen. So we also have it uh, recorded here uh, in the webinar so we know exactly what we're looking at. And we're going to start with the very first one. So the very first one is called the Payroll Liability Cash Requirement Report. And the way ADP reports uh, the payroll is they will report the actual cash outflows that come out of your bank. So if you actually, um, if you actually take a look at that sheet, that's going to match the exact uh, dollar amounts that are being uh, pulled out of the bank account. And at the, at the very end, when you, once you're pretty much uh, done with it, you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to uh, match that with the actual banking. So I'm gonna pull up QuickBooks Online. And then we're going to take a look at what that looks like. I'm going to go into the chart of accounts and I'm going to open up my payroll account and we're going to see all those uh, cash outflows. Let me sort this by date. We should see all the cash outflows that it's the actual money that gets debited from the bank account. Again, if you look at all the cash outflows there, uh, I went ahead and entered them in QuickBooks as if we downloaded them from the bank and they're going to match the bank a hundred percent. Okay. So we should see 22,053.47 as our total uh, debits or total money that comes out of that comes out of our bank. So that all matches exactly what that's going to look like. So step one, if you're using ADP or a third party payroll company, first thing you want to do is you want to send all those transactions to one account. So like, don't sit there and try to figure out what each of those cash outflows mean and try to categorize them on the spot. Just the money comes out, it goes to pay a th pay third party payroll company, send it all to one account. In this particular case, I have an expense account called indirect, indirect labor and I have a sub account called outsource payroll expense. That's the chart of accounts that I'm using. As well, once we're done with this, I'm going to export the chart of accounts, upload it to the Teachable portal so you can download it and import it into your own QuickBooks Online file if you wanted to follow along or if you like my chart of accounts. So my construction chart of accounts, which I'm using in this example, it's available to you. You can download it uh, for the people that paid for the webinar, of course. Uh, so anyway, I went ahead and I, I sent all those payments to that one expense account. Now I'm going to go into my profit and loss report. And that's the only uh, expense entry I've entered so far. And I want to make sure I have one entry that I entered here, a journal entry. I'm going to go ahead and delete this one. because This is the one I'm going to show you how to do in a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and delete it uh, just because I want to have just those expenditures in there. Okay. So, so far we have 22,000, uh, 0053.47, which is the exa exact same dollar amount that shows up in this report. This is the payroll liability report from my payroll company because this actually tells me all the money that came out of my bank in relationship to payroll. Uh, in addition to that, I entered, just for illustration purposes, I entered a health insurance expense that I paid outside of payroll. It's going to be relevant, so we'll, we'll hang on hang on to that. And I went ahead and I booked that into my employee health insurance. These are the only two uh, expenses that are showing in our P&L so far, which is all the money that went out to pay our third-party payroll and our health insurance that we paid to the insurance company directly. Okay, so that's the first step. There's no job costing done at this point. All these things are going straight into that expense account. All right. So the next report I'm going to pull up is the payroll liability report. It's labeled with a two in the top. I'm going to pull it up here in the screen. Okay, this is the report that we're looking at, and the components that we're looking for in the payroll liability report is going to be our total employer contributed taxes, which is a $1,607.34. And then we're also going to get out of this the 
pay by pay insurance, which is this 326.59, that's workers' compensation. So that's an expense from the company. And we also have ADP retirement plan, which is the um, it's under the column ER contribution, which means employer. So this is the portion that the employer pays out of pocket right, to fund the retirement plan for their employees. So like a simple IRA matching or 401k matching, that's the most typical things that you see there where it says ADP retirement plan. You don't see any cash outflow for health insurance in here because we didn't arrange um, ADP to pay the health insurance that was paid separately. That's why I entered a completely separate entry for to actually illustrate that point. So now we need to do a journal entry that moves those 22,000053 out of that generic account and put everything into the correct account that it's supposed to go into. So again, we're going to move this 220053 and put it into the correct account. So I'm going to go to new and go to journal entry. That's the journal entry I just deleted, but I'm going to go ahead and create it. And I'm going to make the journal entry. I'm going to match the check date or the check run date. So that's 12, uh, 210 2021. Again, it'll be really helpful if you got that sheet in front of you so you can follow along. So the first thing we want to do is uh, take the money out of that expense account. Okay. So let's take the money out of the expense account. $65.99. And the credit would be the total amount. I should also have the report in front of us just so we can compare with the report live as we're doing that. So I'm going to pull up that PL report again, just so we can kind of see what's going on simultaneously. So it's this 22,000053 that I want to get out of that outsourced payroll expense account. So I'm going to put 22,053.47. So that is a, uh, that is a credit. Okay. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and do the debits in this case. So we're going to start with the, the payroll taxes. So I'm going to just type taxes. I don't remember the name of that account. So there's a uh, direct payroll taxes. That's not going to be it because this one's under cost of goods sold. So I'm going to go into uh, just payroll to see if I have another account. There we go. Payroll tax expense. That's the one I'm going to use. I'm choosing to stay within the indirect labor category in this case because we'll be talking about direct expenses in a little bit. Just for the time being, we're going to be using our generic payroll tax account or our expense level payroll tax account, we'll be talking about the cost of goods sold portion of this. So that's going to be um, 1607.35. And that comes from right here. This is labeled A. I put a little label there, A. The next one we're going to put is our workers comp, which is uh, labeled B, which is 326.59. So we're going to put workers comp, and this should be an expense account under our regular expense category. We have it under insurances. That's fine. And that's going to be 326.59. So again, we got that from our payroll liability report, which is one of my favorite reports from ADP. And then we're going to go to ADP retirement plan, which is our 401k matching or our retirement contributions, which is 437.03. So let's see, we have an account called retirement contributions. We should have it. There we go. Retirement contributions. That is 437.03. Okay. So, so far, so good. I took away the, the, the entire payroll cash outflow out of the expense account and put the correct uh, tax, uh, workers' comp insurance, and retirement benefits. I'm going to go to the next sheet here, which is uh, the payroll summary report. And it has a whole bunch of markings. And the markings are on purpose uh, because... I put with a little, little star all the employees that are office employees. So I did my math sort of outside of this and I separated what's office and admin and the difference, which is field or, you know, direct labor, right? And the reason for that is because most people, most companies, they want to separate the owner's payroll, the office admin payroll and the field payroll. Now, so far, we don't have any information regarding uh, actual job cost. So right now we're only doing the, the journal entry. Okay. So let's go ahead and enter that. So we're going to put here, uh, we have uh, officer. There we go. Shareholder officer wages. 
that is according to our document 6500 and then we're going to have let's say under the same account uh under the 6500 we should have let's see what we have under here we have payroll office gross wages so that would be for the balance of our office admin that's not owners uh payroll so 480.33 and again these calculations were done manually because our third-party payroll system doesn't do this for us. They don't separate what's field and what's office. Uh, typically, they don't. Some payroll companies do, but typically they don't. And then we're going to do the field payroll, which we have it as direct labor. So we should have our cost to consult account called direct project cost or direct labor, actually. And this is direct job labor. So we'll go ahead and put that balance there, which is 8623.60. And then we have a balance at the end. And I'm going to go to the next sheet, which is label number four, called deductions summary. And the reason why it's relevant is because in this particular case, and this is a real payroll run, by the way. So we're using a real payroll run here to illustrate all these issues here. Um, so that's why you see all the actual names all scratched out. And um, we see here that there's a, an applicable health, vision, and dental which is basically the amount they took out of the employee's paychecks to pay for, uh, uh, in this case, health insurance. Okay, so because, and if you notice earlier, I paid for the health insurance separately. I paid it with a direct transaction to the insurance company. So now I'm going to take out of my expense, I'm going to reduce my expense by the amount that the employees paid for. So this is going to go under health, health insurance employee health insurance, and this would be a credit of 321.42, which is the exact same amount that shows up in our uh, report. I'm going to pull that up again, uh, the report, so we know exactly what we're talking about. This is that applicable health uh, vision, and then to 321.42 is the only one that matters for our journal entry. So now what I'm going to do is, in this case, because I'm not adding any sort of payroll expenses, I'm going to put admin throughout as the customer. And this is just something that you kind of have to get used to. You should always have a customer called admin or overhead. You can actually um, call it whatever you want, admin or overhead. I'm doing this just so all these entries show up under one uh, specific category when I run up run up an expense, um, a P&L by customer. And I'll show you that in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and click on save. And then I'm going to close that. And then I'll go back to my profit and loss. And then I'm going to run this profit and loss by customer and click on run report. And um, in this particular case, actually, let me just do uh, 210, 2021, 210, 2021. So we only see these entries. And you see right here, you see the first entry for outsourced payroll expense or the, or the payroll cash outflows, the money that came out of the bank. I never used a, a, a job. So you see it right there very, very clearly. And I'm doing all this on purpose. So this is like super crystal clear when you see the entry and see the effects on the profit and loss. 